The emotional frequency chart is your roadmap to ascension and enlightenment. And I'm really excited to bring it to you today because it made a big difference in my life once I understood how it worked. I'm also going to be performing a burden release activation, which just by participating will help you cast aside some of the baggage that you've been carrying with you, possibly your entire life. To understand how this works, it's important to realize that all things in our universe are constantly in motion, vibrating. Even objects that appear to be stationary are, in fact, oscillating. For a long time, scientists have known that when they zoom in on solid objects until you get down to the basest building blocks, it reveals that the tiniest particles are really not solid at all that they are just made of energy and they're arranged in such a way as to appear solid. Once we understood this, we also realized that all beings and objects have their own energy field that vibrates at a particular frequency and this changes all the time. The higher we as humans and animals vibrate, the healthier and the happier we are. This field of vibration or field of energy is highly affected by your emotional state because emotions are also frequencies and our bodies are just like radios. We tune in to the appropriate ones for the situation. We use the emotional frequency chart to understand where the emotions fit and how they affect our overall vibration. There are many different charts out there and they are all valid. The main ideas can be found in all of them. This is my take on the emotional frequency chart. Let's start in the middle. At the median position, neutrality or boredom, we are experiencing neither positive emotions nor negative ones. We are just experiencing. And as you can see in the chart, above neutrality is the positive and below are the negative. So as you move down the chart, the more negative the emotional experience, the lower the frequency and vibration. If you spend most of your time experiencing the emotions at the bottom of the chart, then you're going to be vibrating at a lower frequency. If you spend most of your time experiencing the emotions at the top of the chart, then you're going to be experiencing and vibrating at a higher frequency. The lowest emotional frequencies are fear, despair, and shame. As fear is the first emotion and responsible for survival on this planet, it is the basest. It's the simplest and requires the least brain complexity. Microscopic organisms show fear when presented with a dangerous chemical influence in a laboratory. They jettison themselves away from it. Fear is also a selfish state. It's a self-preservation response to external stimuli. Meanwhile, the highest vibrational frequency is unconditional love and enlightenment. At this level, we are so far removed from the fear at the bottom of the chart that we are essentially not even subscribing to the idea that we can die or that we can cease to exist. So constantly being in a state of unconditional love for all is simultaneously knowing that we are actually eternal. So that means that the higher that we vibrate on the chart, the closer we are to our infinite selves. And the closer we are to our infinite selves, the closer we are to a bliss that cannot be experienced otherwise. Unconditional love for all is essentially enlightenment. When we think about enlightenment, we often have trouble with it because it's a nebulous term. Maybe it conjures up images of a monk sitting in a cave in Tibet meditating all the time, and that's what enlightenment is or that's how you achieve it. But in actuality, just recognizing the self in all and having unconditional love for all is the same as enlightenment. And that's much easier for us to get our heads wrapped around and it seems much more achievable, doesn't it? Something that, that we can actually get to in this lifetime. The emotions can be broken down into two categories, the terrestrial emotions and the spirit emotions. Here on Earth, the emotions that we can easily experience all come from the fact that we can die. Fear is the first emotional experience. And all the rest of the negative emotions are derived from that first one. 
There are many tools we're given on this planet to survive, like our ability to feel pain so we can avoid things that would harm our physical bodies. The hunger feeling we experience so we eat food, the thirst to drink water, and the urge to eliminate are all necessary for our 3D survival. The feeling of being hungry is unpleasant, so we pursue food, and the feeling of satiation is pleasant as a reward for accomplishing our goal. The emotions are the same. The negative emotions punish us, so we never do the thing that got us in the situation in the first place. And the positive emotions are the reward for taking the correct action. Fear is a negative experience physiologically. We feel a pain or a tightness in our chest. We feel a fluttering in our stomach. We feel an injection of adrenaline so that we can easily avoid or hopefully easily avoid the threat. However, the fear experience itself is a negative experience. We do not like feeling all those physiological responses. So we try to put ourselves in situations where we will not be afraid in the first place. This is a huge survival mechanism. So if fear felt good, then we would put ourselves in situations where we could die and then we would be more likely to die. So it makes total sense that fear is a negative experience so that we avoid it in the first place. The same is true of all the negative emotional experiences. Jealousy, anger, frustration, disappointment, all of these emotions can be attributed to experiences that could be a threat to our survival. So we do everything that we can to avoid them. Meanwhile, on the positive side, these emotions are also derived from survival. They are the reward, just like the, the pleasant feeling of drinking water or eating food or eliminating. These reward us for taking the action that keeps us alive. When we are our higher selves, ascended masters, or source, then we cannot experience the terrestrial emotions, because these entities do not need to avoid death. Since we know we can't die when we exist in the spirit world as one of these or all of these entities, we can't take the terrestrial emotions seriously. That's why the idea of having fear there is ridiculous. On the flip side, unconditional love is not a terrestrial emotion, especially unconditional love for all. It doesn't make any sense for our primitive ancestors to unconditionally love the rival tribe or their, our predators. If they did, then they may have not taken the selfish action they needed to to survive. And so this species wouldn't be available to us to incarnate into. That's what makes unconditional love for all extra challenging because it doesn't come naturally to us. Unconditional love is infinite, whereas the terrestrial emotions are temporary. We often look at the terrestrial emotions as tsunamis that we can never overcome, that bury us with their negativity, or we look at the positives of the terrestrial emotions as some incredible goal to achieve, romantic love, or happiness. But in actuality, unconditional love is like a mountain range. All the terrestrial emotions combined could fit into a tiny grain of sand in comparison. One of the questions I'm often asked is, if I experience a lower vibrational emotion, will it have a detrimental effect on my overall vibration? And the answer to that question is really no. However, if you spend the majority of your time in a lower vibrational experience, then yes, it can and probably will lower your vibration overall. However, if you just visit a lower vibrational emotion every once in a while, that's totally normal and it's totally natural for humans to do that. The problem that you get into is if you visit a lower vibrational emotion, let's say it's disappointment, and you find yourself not liking your disappointment experience, and it continues to go on for a little while, you might eventually start to become frustrated over having a negative experience. So now you're doubling down on the negative. Not only are you feeling disappointed, but you're feeling frustrated over feeling continuously feeling disappointed. So the trick is to take a look at that lower vibrational experience with a higher vibrational emotion. 
If you can take your disappointment and accept it for exactly what it is, understanding that it is temporary and that it'll eventually go away, then you're starting to pull that negative emotional experience upward to a higher vibration just by looking at it with a higher vibrational emotion. And this can continue. You can look at your disappointment with optimism. You can look at it with gratefulness for what you're learning and what you're getting out of it. And finally, if you can look at it with unconditional love because you love the fact that you're getting to experience all of the emotions here on this planet during this incarnation so that you can bring this experience to yourself as a higher being, then you will move very quickly out of your lower vibrational emotional experience. So why does this chart even matter if it's okay to experience lower vibrational emotions? What matters is where you default to. When you wake up in the morning, what emotion do you feel? When you are doing basic tasks and chores, where are you on this chart? When you've calmed down after an emotional outburst, where on this chart do you return to? I am really asking. I'd like to know what your default is. So you can leave a comment below and I'm going to take all the comments, compile them together, and I'll list below a running tally of where you all stand. I think it'll be really interesting. So the next question is, how do you raise your default? This is the journey or the practice that you will likely spend the rest of your life engaged in. But there is some information and activations that can get this journey kickstarted. So here's some of them. Number one, recognize your divinity. Realizing that you are the universe, that you are the creator, that the sentence, I am source, is true. You created all of this, this miracle universe and this paradise planet. And if you created everything, then you are also creating everything that is currently happening, including everything that is happening to you. And I realize that this can be a difficult pill to swallow, but the difference between you as your incarnation and you as source is intentional. So as source, you decided to come here to become you because of the challenge and the excitement and the difficulty of it. Number two, realizing that the negative emotions are interesting, valuable, and temporary. If you can look at all the negative experiences as something interesting that you get to experience in this life and observe them with curiosity rather than fear, then you can explore all of them in a way that you've never explored them before and always be able to keep in mind that these are temporary experiences. So knowing that it's temporary and it's only going to last so long is huge in your ability to overcome and accept the negative emotional experiences that you get to have here. Number three, being grateful that you're here. Being grateful that you chose this existence and these negative emotional experiences because you are ready to handle them because it was possible for you to experience them and that it would be something different than the infinite, unconditional love experience. Number four, practice regulating your emotions by tuning into different frequencies. Emotions are just frequencies and our bodies are tuners that tune in to the appropriate emotion for the situation. But you have the ability to retune to different emotional experiences, either less painful ones or different ones altogether. At the end of this video, you'll be able to download a free retuning activation, specifically for nervousness, that you can listen to whenever you want. Number five, experience a burden release activation. And that's exactly what we're gonna do next. What this will do is it will remove the physical burden that you've been carrying with you, possibly due to some past emotional experience that you weren't able to handle or deal with appropriately at the time. So this will give you an opportunity to revisit that in a cleared way, in an open way, giving you essentially a second chance. All the instructions will be described during the meditation, so let's go ahead and get started. At this time, I'd like for you to close your eyes and take a nice big deep breath. And as you exhale, I want you to relax in your chair and feel more comfortable in your skin. 
Feel the seat that you're sitting on. Feel the temperature of the room. Feel your clothes against your skin. And I want you to picture yourself standing on the beach. You can feel the warmth of the sun on your face and on your skin. And you've got your head tilted back with your eyes closed. And your arms are wide in a pose of acceptance of the unlimited energy of the universe coming to you through our star. And what I'd like for you to do is to focus in on any discomfort in your body, in your physical body. Maybe it's a weight in your shoulders. Maybe it's a tightness in your chest. Maybe there's a flutter in your stomach. Maybe there's a pain in your back or in your neck. Whatever it is, just focus on that for a moment and think about it as though you were going to describe it to someone else. Like really understand what it feels like. And I encourage you to not so much avoid the feeling, but to really pursue what it feels like. And if you can, if you're not experiencing a post-traumatic stress disorder symptom, then maybe even recall the experience that may have caused this discomfort in the first place. So bring yourself back to that moment so that you can feel, really feel what that feels like. And maybe you can intensify the feeling, which is exactly what we want. So with that feeling, strong and intensified or subtle, it doesn't really matter what it is. I want you to just focus on that feeling. Really feel it. And then I want you to imagine that I've injected you with a colored dye. And this dye is attracted to this discomfort area in your body. I'm sure you've chosen a color as to what this dye is, or it's just appeared to you naturally. And so now, not only can you feel what this burden feels like, but you can see what it looks like as though you were looking at the inside of your body with an X-ray or an MRI. And so now you can see the shape that this discomfort takes. Is it a blob? Is it a cloud? Is it the shape of a muscle? Is it a spike? or a hard stone? What is it that you're feeling and seeing inside your body? And just keep focusing on that. And then what I want you to do is, while you're focusing on that, I'm going to give you a direction, and that is simply breath in. And when I say that, you're going to take a nice big deep breath. You're going to hold it at the top. And then when I say the word awaken, you can exhale. So keep focusing on what this burden feels like and what it looks like. Breath in. Awaken! Excellent. What I want you to do now is picture yourself back on that beach. You can feel the ocean breeze on your skin. You can hear the waves crashing against the shore. You can hear the seagulls. And take another nice big deep breath. And relax again as you exhale. And I want you to check again to see if you can feel 
that burden that you felt a moment ago. How does it feel now? Does it feel any different? Is it slowly going away? Has it instantly gone away? All those are possible, depending on the person. So when you're ready to be a little lighter in your step, then you can open your eyes. There are lots of different activations that I do to help people retune into less painful emotional experiences. In this case, I'm offering a free download of a nervousness retuning. You can use this if you're about to do something that would normally cause a great deal of nervousness, like speaking in front of a group or asking for a raise. This can help you overcome the negative physiological response from nervousness. Maybe you have a tightness in your chest or your body's shaking or your mind is cloudy. This will help clear all that up so that you can approach your nervous situation with a clearer head and a more relaxed body. You can find a link to this download in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. And you can check out these other related videos on my channel. And if you're interested in more content like this, definitely subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so you can be notified of future updates. I'll see you on the next one.